So this was a basic course guys and of course I just wanted to show you I didn't want to overwhelm you with plenty of data of course I could give you a lot of more knowledge but I wanted to be friendly and be open and just the basic stuff you need to start opening Aspen Plus and doing some simulations I know it because personally I remember it was very overwhelming Aspen has plenty of options and stuff like that and it can be a little bit scary especially if you are a student and you have projects or worse if you're working and you need to finish simulations or give results so if you really like this course I will definitely recommend you go to intermediate or advanced courses so I plan to do them when I got time or at least when many people tell me then I get more motivated but the good thing is that you can also find other intermediate or advanced courses in, in the internet so they should look something similar like this so they should include more well remaining uh, the files with respect with the files they should be about more creating and edit editing templates finding the best templates for you also reviewing samples previous uh, projects that's a good idea when because one thing is like is like coding you can code some sti something and if it's your logic and then you change of code or maybe they a colleague sends you a code it's start again and it's the same with the Aspen Plus uh, simulations you need to start again and understand the coding or the logic he used so that's also interesting not only being able to simulate yourself but to increase value of other simulations that already exist also exercises previous projects, all that is very, very good. And it's very important because once again, I tell you, not always you're going to start from zero. You're going to see more in extensions and backup and OneDrive. OneDrive is actually new, but I think it's going to be a very interesting tool. If you actually work or study a lot and you need, I mean, with respect with Aspen, a OneDrive will save your life because you can move anyway and you can save anything. It's like the cloud of Aspen. Then the exchange, support and live chats. Uh, I didn't even show you how it's a live chat or how to get support because I think that's more of advanced. And that will be very like more into intermediate once you know how to simulate, then you will need eventually to get more support. And the continuous training because in Aspen, they always offer you a continuous training. You can get some boot camps or anything near your city of course they charge and they charge good but i think it's worth it if you have the money now physical properties uh, environment you will see a lot of more of methods how to modify them and how to adapt them more to your process the things we've seen before is very generic it's like to say that the method will always apply or something like that but when you are very very like let's say motivated to simulate a process which is very very specific the more specific it means the more methods uh, adapts or more things you will need to adapt for that method also many times you are working with substances that there are not in the databases or simply they are new or you are in R&D and maybe you want to add an extra substance and so or you are in a petroleum industry and you just need to add an assay so you will of course see that in an intermediate advanced course so more on graphing and substances properties I didn't tell you but actually many people use Aspen not for simulation but rather just to know boiling points and asiotropes and distillations that or at least like diagrams temperature pressure and so on it's full of data and we didn't see that so that will be a good option for an intermediate or advanced course. Now, transient state is obviously a very important state, not that common in the industry, I mean, versus continuous state, or, but we will compare steady state versus unsteady state or transient state, batch modeling, startup of a plant, and so on. Also, there's plenty of add-ons or applications that Aspen can get so economy environment, safety environment and the energy environment so I 
think I just got this energy environment, so I don't know if I could do a course on this because I don't have the license. But definitely when I'm done with the intermediate or advanced course, uh, I could add these environments to such courses. Now unit operation, you saw guys, we saw plenty of operations and we can do some, but there were plenty that we just like saw them a little bit. So you can improve here. So for instance, heat exchange, we just see exchanger. You can do multiple exchange, you can do a very specific heat exchanger with plenty of tubes, even shell and tube heat exchanger. The change on how many times it passes in the center and counter flow or co flow. So that's a lot of things you can consider. And especially if you've seen heat exchange class, you know that there's plenty of more into the heat exchange science. Now also distillation. Distillation is a super science per se. So I think we saw one of the most simplest processes or simulations in Aspen. But you would like to probably, if you work in a petrochemical company, you would like to see more on the petrofrac uh, version, which is right here, petrofrac and multifrac. Also batch separation in the columns. There are plenty of industries, especially maybe alcohol industries that use batch separation. They fill a batch, they do it, and then take it away, and then they bottle, for example, wine. Well, not wine, let's say whiskey, vodka, tequila, and so on. Now reactors, <clears throat> we just saw those, the stoichiometric reactors, but we need to find equilibrium reactors, which are these two guys right here. And of course the kinetic reactors, which mean that um, also PBR, which is technically speaking a solid reactor. But I mean, these are, well, the, probably you've seen them in reactor engineering, you know that these guys are dependent on kinetics and kinetics and mechanism are very, very important because they depend on temperature, pressure, uh, composition, species. So playing with stoichiometric reactors is actually easy. And sometimes in real life is that happens. Actually, it happened to me. I just went to these guys and they told me, this is a black box. You don't need to care about it. We want this, we have this, and this is what happens already. So don't move it. And yeah, that's the way I modulated my reactor. Where you want more detail, well, you need to go here. So modeling for mechanism and kinetic theory was the thing I was telling you. And once again, you don't need to do reactors. You maybe just want to get the rate law, you can do that. More about the extraction, absorption, all those uh, mass separation processes we didn't see. You can also include manipulators and calculators, which Calculators are pretty useful. Manipulators are a very interesting topic once you are, let's say, even intermediate. I think it's more advanced. Then pressure. We saw valves, pipes, and pipelines, but just an overview. If you want to increase more, like drop pressure, size of pipeline, bendings, and fittings, and all that, well, you need to take an intermediate or advanced course and review of unit operations with solids. Once again, I always, when I was a student, I always think about chemistry as liquid or vapor phase, but solid industry is way much more than you think. So that's why you will eventually take some unit operations in solids because, I mean, for my experience, it's plenty of solids in the industry. Then finally, we got running simulations. We didn't see that much about how to fix bugs. Or when I mean debugging, I mean how to fix that warning that tells you that. Or worst, how to fix that error, that error that won't give you the values. Also, you need a little bit more on the understanding of the math that is behind it, which is degrees of freedom. And how to simplify processes. Many times we are running too much recycles and I don't know plenty of stuff in the process that could be simplified. I don't know, maybe this could be a flash, this could be a valve, this could be set in the stream, this could be, and so on. So you start simplifying and you get more lean processes, which once again is simulation. So even though you have a valve, but if the valve is only open and the friction is very low, you, well, why model it? Take it away. Now reporting results, we just see tables, so 
and a little bit on Excel, but you can also improve Excel exporting. There's a special menu for that. And you can also import, so many times you have data from Excel, so you can also import it to Aspen, especially for component data. Sensitivity analysis, I would say this is definitely intermediate because it's one of the most beautiful tools you will encounter in Aspen and the most powerful ones is, let's say, <clears throat> you change one variable in the same round, they will give you the report. Let's say, let's change the temperature of this reactor. So you say, I want to change it from 80 Celsius to 120 Celsius by intervals of 10 Celsius. So you will have 20, 90, 100, 110. So instead of you running it one, two, three, four, five times, you run it and the sensitivity analysis will show you everything, guys. So that's powerful. And you can do even more complex sensitivity analysis with different variables and so on, depending on what do you want to analyze. And also charts, graphs, and tables. We just saw the basic tables graph we didn't open those or charts that's very common especially if you want to show something so maybe the distillation column and how many steps do you need and so on programming tools you will definitely see some fortune coding some logic inside of the software manipulator hierarchy and calculators are pretty useful for the flow sheets so yeah essentially that's what i wanted to show you about what you should look for the next courses besides the ones I already show you here in the basic course. So hopefully you like the course and hopefully you keep continuing your education in the Aspen Plus course.